Today, we are visiting True Garden. It's a vertical aeroponic food farm. I was really excited to go here because I originally stumbled across True Garden and their farm on Instagram, and it's so cool looking. It's just a series of columns that are covered in different vegetables and fruits that are completely fresh, and I was mostly interested to see what the biology of growing food was like because vertical farms grow food in a very different and sustainable way. My name's Troy Albright. I'm actually a licensed pharmacist. As I've done consult on my patients, I realize it starts with the food they're putting in their body. Troy is a licensed pharmacist by trade. He went through school in the very modern medical way of doing things and through the process of having children of his own with their own illnesses and conditions and also being overweight himself, he changed how he approached food and what he put in his body and it changed everything for him and his family. My parents and grandparents were farmers in Minnesota mm -hmm. and we had black soil there. Here in Arizona, the soil is like this red clay stuff. Sure. So if you don't amend it and really work that soil, you don't get a lot of good quality produce out of it. Mm. So when I saw the tower garden, I can control the environment, I control the water, I control the nutrients. I love this, I can control every aspect of growing my own food. So how does this whole process work? Basically, the first step is to put whatever seeds you want into the coconut core. This grow medium here is coco core. It's actually a certified organic grow medium, and it's a byproduct of coconut husk. And you throw, put your seeds in there, and then once they're one to two inches tall like this, I mean, we can come over here and, and just plant these right in here. They fit right in the, in the pod. You throw it in, the pump turns on every three to 15 minutes, depending on the program pumps the water and the nutrient solution all the way up to the top and then just using the law of physics. Yeah. What goes up comes down, right? Yeah. And it just rains down, there's a shower cap, rains down and hits all these spots. So something I find interesting is that you only need that amount of soil. Right. Like you envision just miles and miles of dirt and soil to grow plants, right, right. but you only need that amount? Right. Yep, that's or does all it need. vary for every different plant that you're growing? Uh, nope, just that small amount. It's actually not even soil, it's coconut husk. If we use soil, we'd have a lot more bugs. We'd have to use pesticides and herbicides and yeah. fungicides. I choose not to use any of those here. Organic is what? As just clean food. as Yep, just food. Yeah. Do you think that's really happening today? Well, by the way, you just said that now. <laughs> Vegetables typically that are transported into your state by law, even if they're organic, are sprayed with pesticides. So that's not ideal. The problem is our soils are depleted. They're, the FDA has lots of studies showing that when those leafy greens are cut and travel, what, on average, 1,200 to 1,500 miles to get to your plate. They come they're, across pesticides. Yeah, pesticides or they're 50% uh, less nutrients. They've lost up to 50%. In some cases, there's hardly any nutritional value. Here, look at some of this basil. Uh, let's grab a beautiful my basil favorite. plant. Pull this out. Look at those beautiful roots on there. Oh my gosh. I mean, look at that. That's insane. This it is 21 days so old. Good. Yeah. The vegetables that we saw at True Garden were just growing right there. There was no soil, there was minimal water. It was really just their roots hanging in these hollow tubes being saturated in nutrient-dense substances and growing to be the most beautiful vegetables. I mean, if we pull one out here, it's like a beautiful bouquet. Let's get one out of here so you can see. I mean, the, the roots, I mean, you got these beautiful roots now on I there. Now I know what my bouquet is gonna be for my wedding. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Yeah, isn't that something? Why don't you try a piece of that? Vegetables have a much more vibrant and bolder and fuller flavor than I think most of us have experienced. I feel like it tastes different than what I'm used to. Like I mm -hmm. feel like most romaine lettuce tastes so watered down. Yeah. When summer's over, this It'll is be even, even better. sweeter? Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I've ever tasted romaine that was this sweet. It's stronger, it's more unique from vegetable to vegetable because you're not getting that dirt flavor. A lot of that comes from growing the fruit or vegetable in this coconut husk and feeding it with these nutrient substances without any soil. It's amazing. I don't know how I haven't eaten vegetables this fresh before oh. and I feel like everyone needs to, like I buy expensive freaking spinach at the store, all organic, 
everything. I, I Whole paycheck at Whole Foods, it happens, but it doesn't taste like this. When they grow most spinach in sand, so a lot of times when you crunch on spinach, you got like a grainy taste yep. to it. That's the sand that they grow it in, so you always want to rinse it well and get rid of that. One of the craziest things I tried was the stevia leaf. Here, try just a piece of this. Okay, see just if I can guess. Just a really small amount. What is that? It's a natural plant sweetener. I just want to eat this as like an after dinner dessert, and then I will never eat ice cream again. Isn't that, I mean, that's so sweet, isn't it? Yeah. I have had the stevia powder, but never a stevia leaf. Oh, that is stevia. This is the actual stevia plant here. Wow. That's amazing. You could use it in so many things and it is so powerful. I also tried a mint chocolate herb and it tasted just like mint chocolate. So once we have a sprout, we put it in the tower, 26 days later, you have that. Things grow so super fast. So this whole thing was 26 days? Yes. My lanta. So what happens is you get accelerated growth because the roots can get a lot of oxygen. Ah. Since there's no soil, there's no weeds which is amazing because pooling weeds is literally the worst weekend activity ever. Vertical farming, it's just your head of lettuce or your kale or your spinach or your berries or your tomatoes. No bugs, no weeds. What is the actual benefit of having a vertical farm versus having a normal farm that we're used to seeing? Big part of it is with a vertical farm, we're really saving on space. Mm -hmm. We can use 90% less land, but we can grow 90% more food. When you go vertical like this, this is one tenth of an acre, we can grow 10 times more food as a result of going vertical. Plus our resources, we use 90 to 98% less water. That's huge. Yeah. I mean what, 3% of the water in the, in the world is fresh water? So it's not just a commodity here in the United States, but all over the world having fresh water. Mm -hmm. So we gotta really conserve our resources and if we don't, we're setting ourselves up for major catastrophe. How many people do you think you could feed like just out of this space? Out of this space, we could easily feed, um, gosh, uh, uh, 100 families on a weekly basis. Wow. As we all know, our world is changing. The land available to us is changing. The quality soil that we have on our earth is changing. And this may be the most sustainable way to feed our communities moving forward. If someone watched this video and wanted to start gardening tomorrow or today, what would be like your top three tips for doing that? Grow the things you love to eat. Keep it simple. Use clean water. Use good quality seedlings. We've got residential models as well as commercial What, is, what farms. is a residential model? So the residential model is about five or six feet tall, just like you are, and um, one to two towers could easily feed a family of four, depending on what you're growing. You're gonna be exposed to less chemicals. You'll love it. You'll really love it. I was a skeptic. I absolutely thought the biology of this food must be different if we're not making it with soil and the same amount of water and the same amount of sunlight as the vegetables and fruits we're used to. But the matter of the fact is, it's better. It's got more nutrients, more minerals, it's more dense in the rich vitamins that your body needs, and it's just more environmentally friendly. You know, as a compound pharmacist, I do consults. And I got into this because I really saw not just my own kids, but my own patients that were missing the food part. They were missing that nutrition part. And as I corrected nutrition in them, I'm like, oh my, this changed their whole life. You were taught in pharmacy school, just give a drug, give a drug, give a drug. Drugs are just band-aids. They don't cure us. If, if you don't have good nutrition, that foundation that we're building our body on isn't there. And so that leads to all sorts of things, you know, depression, leaky gut, you know, gum disease, people that are constantly having headaches and they're not growing properly. Our kids don't grow properly because of nutrition. Mm -hmm. So it starts with good foundation. If you have a good, good foundation with nutrition, eat it, what you grow or buy it locally, you're going to be way healthier. So crazy how your diet can affect pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to put into a sentence how cool and interesting I thought this whole experience was. I've always been a firm believer in what you put in your body matters and the food you put in your body matters and we are allowing food industries to spray it with pesticides, to transport it super far, change its enzymes and nutritional benefits so that when we're receiving the food it's not even giving us the fuel that we need to survive in a healthy way. The body is an incredible piece of equipment, machinery. You put good stuff in, it gives good stuff out. If you put bad stuff in, 
in time, bad stuff's going to come out. But you can correct it. Mm -hmm. It just takes some, some effort on our part to do what's right. Who said that, Hippocrates? You are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Let food be medicine. Let medicine be food. He said it a lot more eloquently, but uh, yeah, I firmly believe that. True Garden was quite possibly one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It was pristine. It was green. Not fake green, not sprayed on green. It was beautiful, vibrant green. And the oxygen in that greenhouse, I would like to one day live in a greenhouse with that pure oxygen. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to learn about my health, to learn about my food, and also to share the information with you guys in hopes that it maybe changes one thing. You don't have to change everything overnight. Do one thing that will make you better tomorrow than you are today. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was one of my favorite videos to make and share with you all. If you care about health and wellness and want to learn more, you should definitely watch our tutorial on how to make natural cleaning supplies because what you spray around in the air around you matters too.